hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we're doing something different we're talking about international conferences how to apply for international conferences and how to get conference grants so in form of um, travel grants in form of hotel grants in form of registration grants for international conferences so this will be useful for a number of graduate students and even undergraduate students as well because they are several benefits in attending conferences. I'll be talking about all these in this video. So I've been opportunity to get a number of conference invites and also funding at different conferences, different countries as well, whether in the US, as you can see here on the UK, or even um, Prague, that's in Czech Republic, um, even in Canada as well. So I've been able to get a number of conferences and also funding for them. And I think it's time I also shared this knowledge with you as well, just in case you're interested in international conferences. So there are lots of funding out there, I must say, for conferences as well, but they are not as evident, they're not as um, commonplace. You have to like dig for them to find them. And I've been opportunity to get a number of them as well, I must say. And some of them will give you like a pocket of money, like a particular amount of money, as you can see here. This is over a thousand pounds. I covered my recent um, academic trip to the US, to St. Louis, as you can see here. And there are some other conferences where they get everything covered, both your accommodation, as you can see here, and even flights as well. So you just come without paying anything. So there are some conferences that are that generous. And I must say as well that um, the word conference um, could also come in form of um, a workshop, symposium, colloquium. So some of some of the times I think they are used interchangeably and some other times there are some differences. So just check, read the um, requirements or the program and see how the different conference or colloquium is, is um, arranged. So why attend the conference in the first place? Why attend conferences? I think it's good at building your CV. It gives you like an extra edge in case you'll be applying for a job or for a position in the future. So having attended a number of conferences and having presented in those conferences um, shows that you're like a, a serious student or a serious professional who um, has visibility as well, able to share his or her work with colleagues. And that's the second point, actually, sharing your research with your colleagues and showing them what you're doing, but also an opportunity to also hear from them. So you share your research and you also sit down and also hear what they're also doing. You get good feedback um, for sharing your research and you also have the opportunity of giving feedback to others as well who share their research. And then um, visibility that was mentioned earlier. I think this visibility is often taken for granted because you might be doing something great, but nobody knows about it. So it's good to put yourself out there and through attending conferences and presenting at conferences, you are able to put your research at the fore. So in case they have a need for your area of expertise, for instance, they say, oh, I remember that Victor is working on that particular topic. Let me give him a chat. Let me send him a message or an email. I think he's a professional on this. Well, if you have no visibility, but you're doing something great, nobody would know you. Nobody will invite you for a gig or send a job opportunity to you, or even head hunt you for something. So it gives you that visibility. When you go to a conference, try to present well and also network, talk to people, because you do not know what will happen. So networking, collect phone numbers, collect emails, collect social media handles. Usually, most academics like sharing mostly their Twitter handles, I must say, not Instagram or Facebook, because those ones look a little bit more informal. But most, for most conferences I've attended, I see like the discussions or the, the chair of the conference either following me or me going back there to follow him or her on um, usually Twitter as well. So you could do that, get their business cards, if possible, phone number, email address, follow them on Twitter, you know, and things like that. So a conference is also a good place to get a job. So you see a number of um, final year PhD students or even early career researchers using the conference to like pitch themselves to top professors who are likely in um, hiring committees in different universities. So you could see them exchanging cards sometimes, talking about um, their research and, you know, pitching themselves essentially for like a job interview for those big professionals who are in attendance as well. 
And finally, of course, visit a new city. Usually the conference gives you an opportunity to like go somewhere else. Just a few months ago, I was, or less than a month ago, I was in the US for the first time. A new city, a new country, um, and new places, new food, new cuisine. So yeah, it's also a beautiful way to travel around as an academic, you know, hashtag academics without borders. So how do you find conferences in the first place? I think first of all, you should look for um, professional and academic bodies in your field. So this should be professional professional academic bodies in your field. So there are different bodies, for instance, in political science, different academic associations. So look for them, look out for them. You could do that through a simple Google search, if you ask me. Then after finding them, what do you do? You search for their websites and look for um, their workshops and conferences. Look for the dates and the venues. So usually these bodies, they have conferences, they have workshops, they have get togethers. So check their, their website and see when these conferences come up, the dates and the venues. And then you get a feel of, okay, this is what they present or this is what this is when they come together. This is what my expectations are of them and things like that. So also check for calls for papers and panels. So this is where you get an opportunity to submit a paper. So check for calls. Usually in their workshops or in their conferences, they put this advert there that call for papers, submit this um, submit papers or conferences for this coming conference. So look out for these kinds of um, info on the website. Then check for conference themes and focus. So for some conferences, they have a particular theme. Some of them will say, okay, this year we're looking at um, um, politics of the environment. Next year we're looking at politics of um, global health. But for some other conferences, for the very big ones, they look at um, several issues simultaneously. So there might be several panels going on at the same time. In the same conference, you have um, politics of elections. Another one is looking at um, gender politics. Another one is looking at authoritarianism. Another one is looking at African politics. So there are some very big conferences. There are smaller conferences. So look exactly the different themes they cover and to be useful in your planning as well. So now how to write a conference ab abstract. For you to um, be an active participant, I believe, at a conference, and for you to even get funding, most times you need to like present a paper. So you must have submitted an abstract and your abstract accepted, and then you stand more a uh, greater chance of getting funding for that conference than just being like a, um, a member of the audience not presenting any paper. So try as much as possible to pull forward um, an abstract for a conference. And of course, this abstract, they have different word counts. One conference might tell you present 3,000, not 3,000, but 300. Another might say 500, another might, might say 250. So read the particular instruction of the particular conference. So for a conference abstract, it's quite short, just like one page usually, or even less than a page, maybe half a page, depending on the conference. So usually you give broad, when you start your first sentence, like a broad introduction of the topic you're talking about and what people have said before you, then the specific contribution or the specific problems you'll be addressing, and then how would you be addressing these problems? That's your method. We'll be doing interviews, experiments, um, focus group discussions, content analysis, discourse analysis, quantitative, qualitative, things like that. Then your result, what did you find out after your method, after using these methods on this problem? And then the broader implication for the field. Um, I know a number of conferences who, and um, conferences that rather would accept a working paper. It means probably you've not found a result yet or you're just still gathering data. So just keep them as engaged as possible, even though you do not have like your results yet. I think I attended a conference in June where they were just interested in my method, not even my results, that how are you tackling or how do you intend to tackle this problem? So let's give you feedback on your method. So there are some conferences or workshops like that that will help a work in progress. So if you do not have like your results yet or all those things, do not worry. Just write something engaging, expose the problem, make it urgent, make it critical, make it catchy for them to say, okay, this is worth looking at. This is worth presenting. And remember, try as much as possible to get your um, paper, your abstract accepted because you're more likely to get conference grants or money if um, you're presenting a paper. And of course, mind the word count or character count 
as specified by the conference. So how do you get funded for conferences? And um, these are my major sources, at least the ones that have worked for me. And um, the first one is assistance for my department. So my department has been very helpful when it comes to assisting with my conference. But I know that not all departments have like pots of money to support their graduate students, especially if you're from the global south where there's this cash crunch, you know, things are tight and you might not get that kind of assistance. So if you're in the global north, <laughs> in Europe, America, most times you have like small money here and there that your university might be able to assist you with. I remember for my own particular case, I exhausted my university grant actually, and I still had it, I still I wanted to go for more conferences. So I added more conferences to my bucket list. Well, my university grants was exhausted. So I tried to push them a little to like increase my allowance. And fortunately they did. So you could first consult your department. And then there are some student discounts for a number of conferences. They might say it is free for graduate students or you pay half the price or you have 10% discount or 50% discount depending on the conferences. So check for student discounts usually. It's usually lower than what other people will pay. Um, for the conference attendance, another thing. Then look for um, grants um, provided by the conference organizers themselves. So a conference, for instance, to encourage participation from students or from those from the global south might give actually travel grants or hotel grants or registration fee waivers. I know I've gotten a number of them as well. It says, since you're coming from a global south country, or since you're a graduate student and you do not have money, so we'll be waiving this fee for you, you can come for free. So look out for those things as well. You might just get them. Then finally, external bodies. There's external bodies might be giving grants as well. We'll be looking at a number of external bodies giving grants as well in this video. So do not worry. So you could just through Google or through, you know, Look for external bodies giving grants for conferences or giving small grants for research. All these small, small grants, you can put them together and just use it to fund your research. Talking about external bodies, I know there's this grant for West African researchers. If you're a PhD student, you can also apply for this. They give you $1,500 for transport and $1,500 for um, pockets money for stipend as well. And I know um, the association of um, universities of Commonwealth, I think Commonwealth universities, they also give early career grants for conference attendance. And that's close to, I think, 2,000 pounds. Yeah, there about. Yeah, I think so. So look more into these things that we've talked about with an example. So this is an example of one of the associations or groups, professional groups I, I talked about earlier. So this is the Midwest Political Science Association, and they have a conference coming up in Chicago, as you can see here. And it's coming up on the on April 13th, 2023, and it's both in person and virtually. So you see lots of information here, and the deadline of the submission of abstracts, so these are the kinds of information we will be looking at. The subfields, yeah. These are the information we should be looking at. Information, rather, that you should be looking at. And they have lots of things here on how to write, like, a proposal or abstract. Oh, yeah, they call it a proposal, but it's similar with an abstract, like the word count and every other thing. So you can see full information here. So you might say, what about money? How do I get... Do they have any grants for students, for international students, uh, or for people who intend to attend without, with financial difficulties? So here I typed MPSA travel grants, and here I can see some suggestions already. There's this one, graduate student travel scholarships. You can open the tab and see what it contains. Here there's conference scholarships and fee waivers. So you can read here and see what this one entails. And you can see here they give right up to 11 different grants of $500. So the amount here you can see is $500. And for some people, it might not be sufficient. Maybe for those in um, the US already, this might probably help them. But for those traveling from, let's say you're traveling from the UK or you're traveling from one of the countries in Africa, 500 would not help much, I must say. But it's it's 
it's it's an assistance, the form of assistance, but it might not help. So you might have to like look for additional sources, but now you know they are giving about 500. So it can help you plan and see, okay, how much more do I need to cover for the conference? And you can see this one also has a number of other ones. Fee waivers, the graduate one, developing nations scholarship as well. It gives scholarship for those coming from a developing country. Okay. So you can read how much it contains, how much are they giving, and also do your own estimation and see and see if you can go with it. So that is it for the MPSA. Look at this one. I mentioned this one earlier. This is the WARA grant. That's W-A-R-A, -A, West African um, Research Association grant. As you can see here, it gives this for transport and gives this for um, pocket money. But it only funds like research or conferences within the African continent. So check out for their deadlines. I think they open twice every year. So visit this place often and see when they're open and also check for the applications requirements. The last one I'd like to look at is this one for early career researchers. And it's what I think a total of 2,000 Great Britain pounds. And it covers several things, conference registration flights, accommodation, visa cost, health insurance, COVID testing, ETC. So I think you can also play with Google and see if you can find bodies, NGOs getting grants or giving out grants for scholarship. So that is it, guys. I hope this was useful. Um, attending international conferences and finding funding for your international conferences. And as usual, guys, I cannot wait to celebrate you. Start you know, applying and taking advantage of all the opportunities coming your way. So today we did something a little bit different. So apart from the scholarships that we'll talk about almost every other day, today we're talking about other opportunities, international um, conferences to be precise. And I will see you at the top sooner than later. So bye-bye for now.